नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सेथोलॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सेथोलॉजी मींस साइंस ऑफ ट्रुथ और स्टडी ऑफ ट्रुथ अपोजिट टू दैट इज मिथोलॉजी व्हिच मींस साइंस और स्टडी ऑफ एक लाइव और इमेजिनेशन फॉर ऑल द पीपल इन एलए वी हैड अ वंडरफुल टाइम यस्टरडे सो वी ऑल नो व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग यस्टरडे इन यूसीएलए कैंपस इट वाज अमेजिंग टाइम सो डू जॉइन श्री नरेश ओक जी इन सैन डिएगो on 24th and 25th august so let's begin without delay let us welcome shrinivas okay namaste and welcome to the show namaskar ji namaskar ji aditya ji meeting after a long time on this show anyways uh-huh. then you i see your i follow you everywhere in all the colleges in ranveer alabadia show many shows i have been following you and well i was uh, at uh, our mutual friend another mutual friend's place jaipur dialogues uh-huh. uh, i was there for two days we recorded uh, two podcast and one uh, quick program so they will come out in a due course and just to give you a broad level statistics so i am on the road absolutely with uh, wheels on my legs for uh, uh, almost two uh, more than 200 days now and uh, out of that uh, i somebody is keeping track of my presentations big and small and they amounted to 150 plus but i'm i'm so in the 200 plus days so very exciting times and this would be add to that 150 plus so <laughs> let's let's get going you know so very happy to be here thank you thank you nilji so with the shogoko all the for the viewers i will also say that he is the only muni rishi in my channel and it has not changed so if you heard me before his videos so you need to know that nilesh ji is the only rishi muni on my channel and uh, and you can call him acharya also in this field so tell me about the new ramayan evidence which is coming Yeah, well, Aditya ji, you and all our wonderful viewers are going to find this extremely fascinating. Uh, has very different flavor, but it's very consistent with the internal evidence of Mahabharat and also Ramayana. Okay, that's just the amazing part. So, uh, since we haven't done a program for a long time, but I'm sure people watch. I mean, watch and re-watch our previous episodes. that we did a century you know century uh, during the covid times you know 114 right? yeah so just for the background so everyone knows mahabharat happened more than 7000 years ago to be precise 5561 bce 7500 years ago and ramayana occurred uh, more than 14000 years ago to be precise 12209 bce and rugveda and other vedas of course in deep antiquity so we don't need to go there because we are going to talk about ramayana and mahabharat but if you are thinking this is just another evidence uh, or same evidence told another time it's absolutely not okay so where do we begin aditya ji there are two sets of evidence and some very interesting surprises okay so one set of evidence is uh, evidence that we can beautifully match and therefore corroborate the mahabharat and ramayan the details but also their timing the identification of say ram and krishna but also their timings okay so this comes from the greek records so because it comes from the greek records we need some understanding like you know it won't be exactly the same name and i'll explain what i mean by that say for example uh, socrates socrates from the greek records by the time it is understood as in india he becomes sukrant now somebody who is coming from uh, like a greek they will say sukrant now that's not even close to socrates but that's how uh, the name is take another name uh, alexander now alexander you know what what it becomes in india sikandar you know that sikandar so somebody who knows alexander and somebody says, the second there says yeah that's kind of similar but not exactly similar i don't think they are the same individuals so this is very important for uh, our audience and whoever listens to it afterwards to know that when uh, a certain names get transferred 
to other place you know they can change like uh, mushon in a uh, the hindi movie lagan you know the elizabeth and people can't even say the name and they may turn it into something else you know something like this so this is one aspect the second aspect i want to talk about is uh, i was traveling through india different places and may many places but very interesting consistent evidence from three different parts of india one of them uh, two of them like relatively close but still they are not that connected very consistent evidence related to specifically ramayana but that is something not there in valmiki ramayana but it matches for the timing of ramayana just imagine that so these are the two uh, maybe let's do the social memory first you know through my travel and then we will come to uh, the greek evidence yes. is that okay yes sir Okay. so social memory uh, we can call this a sthala puran just like we have a atra puranas of course we have itihasa we have vedas samvitas upanishad a whole big genre the university you know of a sanatana but beyond puranas uh, there is something called sthala purana meaning when there is any specific temple or a, any specific important place the from the public memory the things are extracted you know so that we can say somebody says oh when this city was established i mean if you take san diego or if you take atlanta uh, people will talk about okay the originally there was a small uh, fort that was built by people coming from europe it was done in this time this may be considered the beginning of the city of atlanta or they may say well that's true however the native uh, you know uh, uh, native uh, americans who were there long before this and they also consider this as a colony and so on and they may have some memories of it that there was a big flood there and they moved their location to the mountain and so on so forth i am going to cite three memories from three different parts of india related to ramayan but those are not there or the mention of this particular event is not there in the valmiki ramayana itself so that makes it very interesting let's begin with the one of the three memories now this is in uh, the extreme southern state of kerala okay in india the memory goes something like this aditya ji that after Ra ram bhagwan ram killed ravan okay and the uh, the vibhishan established himself as a king because remember ravana's son indrajit uh, he was he was killed by lakshman uh, in the battle so now very likely they thought i mean we don't know these details but just for a uh, completion of a story i'm saying this his wife and uh, took uh, his wife took uh, their kids with her and left left for kerala i mean she left for away from ravana's lanka i presume and landed in kerala and then they establish there and then therefore some people in kerala consider themselves uh, descendants of indrajit line this is very interesting now the important point is they did not just leave i mean indrajit's wife with her children did not just leave because of vibhishan because vibhishan was a virtuous king and you know she didn't expect necessarily uh, uh, although she may not be happy with it that's why i said the first uh, uh, speculation but the story that is understood the sthala purana narration that is understood in kerala is like ravana's lanka was flooded and either fully or partly destroyed by the rising sea levels and therefore uh, the, uh, indrajit's wife with her children migrated to kerala so just remember the important point is that there was a sudden sea level rise in this kerala story let's go to the second story the second story comes from if you come further north like a central india but come to the west coast and the state of gujarat and the both the number story number 2 and story number 3 is from state of gujarat but actually from the two corners of gujarat so one first one is uh, let's go to kachh you know just not far from dwarka the current dwarka mandir uh, you can hear me fine right very clear okay Uh, just uh, just uh, north of dwarka is that area of a saurashtra and kachh uh, not far from where uh, one of your uh, 
other guest rupa bhati ji is from you know where where she is uh, she is stationed happy and actually this evidence comes from rupa bhati ji by the way uh -huh. where she has said that in the colloquial memory there in the kachha area and maybe the entire gujarat area i'm not sure there is a saying and because i don't know gujarati and i don't remember the saying the saying is of this kind for example someone starts a new business and let's say they go bankrupt in that business so the saying goes something like this just like ravana's lanka went under water this this person's business went under water you know that's how they will say which is very interesting so there is a second memory now we have besides kerala of ravana's lanka going under water uh, and it doesn't say like a sea level rise or something but in kerala that they do say sea level rise okay so this is a second memory in the kachha area of a gujarat where uh, ravana's lanka went under water let's go to the third one uh, it is not far it is in gujarat but on the other side of gujarat uh, with the maharashtra border close to nashik uh, and that area dang the area is called dang area okay and a rampant uh, you know uh, very uh, what you call conversion by extremely idiotic wrong agenda driven means are happening there okay it's a it's a hot bed for conversion unfortunately uh, but the people those who are surviving i mean those who are not falling for conversion are still trying their best to preserve it it's interesting that you know what is the greeting there like any time two people meet if you consider entire gujarat uh, sorry most of gujarat the greeting is jai shri krishna you would have noticed that you know which is which is vallabhacharya ji's uh, impression or whatever it is and krishna's dwarka is there interestingly in the dang area uh, the greeting is ram ram wow. any time two people meet just natural greeting just like a up you will have jai ram ji ki here it's like a ram ram huh? it's a very natural greeting that comes so they are very closely tied with a uh, bhagwan ram closely tied with a uh, mahas manje uh, maharshi shabari see in a colloquial story shabari is like a, a, a you know forest woman but she was a great tapaswini right. shishya of a matanga rushi that's what valmiki ramayan tells us so and they can many of them consider themselves descendant of shabari okay now back to our story consistency of a story you know what they are uh, the, the story goes there there is one mountain in that area it's a very hilly area and a very green area lots of trees uh that area there is one mountain and i forgot the name of it i have written it down and their story goes like this that after ram killed ravan and then the end of treta yuga happened more or less at that time so in treta yuga ended with a flood global flood so to say and the water came everywhere into their area the dang area of gujarat we are saying now this may be just a social memory actually whether water came there i don't think we have a uh, geological evidence for water coming all the way to dang but maybe those people migrated to the dang area with that memory but what is beautiful is that they say there was a flood everywhere and it uh, everything went under water except that mountain that they show and i i went and visited that mountain okay uh, so that mountain didn't go now the now these are all three different stories the common point in those stories is that after ram killed ravan uh, there was a seal sudden sea level rise and there was a flood lanka was destroyed lanka was destroyed in two cases and in this case not so much lanka was destroyed but everywhere it was flooded in to the extent the dang area was filled with water except that mountain meaning there was a flood so all three agree on the flood now this is a key point now i i should have put a powerpoint slide uh, on that but i have uh, not done that and we can do it here right if you want to do it yes, or we can you do it. yes you can do it okay. yeah okay so just let me quickly uh, see the slide and i i said no and then uh, i think it will be good to show that one slide and it won't take much because it's visual for people okay so let me pull that one slide okay there we go and down. so all i have to do is share yes okay so share screen there 
All right. Uh, so if people can see this, can you see it? Yes, very clear. Okay. So now what is interesting is there is a in a social memory of Kerala in social memory of a Dang area of Gujarat and in social memory of the Kutch of a Gujarat. There is a uh, reference to a sudden sea level rise or a flood immediately after Ram killed Ravan. Now exactly after how many years that information is of course not there because of a Stalapuran nature of it. Just like in our thing. But and, and it is not mentioned anywhere in Valmiki Ramayana. On the other hand, what I want to show here is uh, this particular graph. And just for clarity, I'm going to pull two more things. And today, right now, at least our subject is not the Atlantis, but I will complete this. Sorry, here. So from the top, if you go, that is called CRE3, Catastrophic Rise Event 3. This is a oceanography data uh, from around the world but specifically this one is from the caribbean okay very interesting seven different locations give an extremely consistent set of data in the caribbean and of course if you go for cre3 you which is krishna's dwarka getting flooded and destroyed in 55 25 bce around the world but around the world you may not see the other two events in you know, a much detailed evidence but you see that evidence in caribbean is this cre3 and quickly i will mention before coming to ramayana times down there is that it's such a fascinating evidence and aditi ji i'm surprised there are many researchers around the world who keep on talking about atlantis they keep on talking about uh, plato saying before his time it happened uh, 9000 years ago Okay, now Plato's time is approximately 9,000, uh, sorry, 2,500 years ago, about 500 BCE. So if you take 9,500 BCE and add our uh, 2,500, we get 11,500. Or if you just want to go from the BCE itself, because Plato is 500 BCE and Plato is saying 9,000 years before him, based on the other accounts that he heard. Okay, it's right there. The what wherever the Atlantis is, I don't know. I don't think anyone else really knows. There are a lot of speculation, but a very powerful scientific empirical evidence for the flooding and destruction of Atlantis, wherever that is, 9,000 years before Plato, which is before 500 BC, is there here in this CRE3. By the way, this is a great work of um, uh, uh, Professor Paul Blanchon, who who was doing his PhD in geology when I was doing my master's in chemical engineering in Canada at the exactly same university, University of Alberta. But the three uh, Stalapuran references that I told you, that reference, that evidence is here. And just see how magnificent the evidence is. Actually, as we go back in the past from Krishna's Dwarka in 55-25 BC, so this is, see, this is 7.6 if you subtract just simply for simplicity 2000 years of our era that gives you 5600 bce and of course 5600 bce plus minus like 120 years which includes 5525 bc and then cre2 is the atlantis now come to the cre3 again let me remind everyone it is not there in valmiki ramayana so valmiki ramayana has not captured that memory apparently of course remember it has not affected ayodhya at all okay it has affected only lanka uh, in the context of Ramayana. So maybe that's the reason. But the memory is there in Kerala, memory is there in two places in Gujarat that there was a flooding after Rama killed Ravana. And what is the time of Rama killing Ravana? 12,209 BC. If you add 2000, that makes it 14.2, 14.2 event. And just see here, this is 14.2. So this is 12,209, I'm saying. 14.2 would be like uh, 12,200. So just after uh, Rama killed Ravan, like either a decade after or maybe a few hundred years after, it doesn't matter. Okay. But here is a, out of these three catastrophic rise event, the most, uh, the, the magnificent or the, the intense event is this sudden sea level rise of 13.5 meters on an average. How interesting is this? It's not there in Valmiki Ramayana, but it is there remembered by three different groups in India in the specific context of Ramayana and 
Now, fast forward to 1995, fast forward meaning from 12,200 BCE, Ramayana time to 1995, our times, like say 30 years ago, and we have this evidence. So this is a one piece of evidence that I wanted to show. This is like a new finding, you know, especially uh, the, the Dang area was a new finding. Uh, I had discussed uh, the Kerala with uh, my good friend Trivin Nair. He has written a novel on it. And in the prologue and epilogue of that novel, he does use uh, this reference, the Kerala story, Kerala re remembering uh, flood after um, after Ramkir Ravan. So I'm just going to close this. So this is part one. Any questions before we go on to the Greek records? Actually, uh, Gadotkash meeting Vibhishan, that is also in the same Lanka. Huh. No, is, yeah, go ahead. What do you want to say? You so want still, to say something about it? Yeah, huh? still at that time, uh, the Lanka was still inhabited. And after correct. that, the Lanka... Now the, hmm, yes. Correct, correct. But what is interesting is, uh, see, there is a, in, in, um, in narrative writing, there is a concept. I mean, in modern day in academia, we discuss that concept called hagiography. Uh -huh. Say, for example, like, um, so now fast forward from 12,209 BC to 5561 BC and mm, many years before that, because before the Mahabharata war, they did the Rajasuya Yadnya. Yes. And that is when the Sardev, the one that you are mentioning, Sardev is going in the southern direction. Yes. So he goes everywhere, all other Kaveri, Godavari, you know, Pandyas and Chola and all that he goes. And then when it comes to go to Vibhishan, interestingly, he does not go himself. As you said correctly, he calls the Bhima's son, Gatotkacha. And he says, please go on my behalf to Vibhishan and uh, get his permission, you know, get his blessings and permission for conducting Rajasya Yadna. So this has been interpreted by many folks in many different ways. I will not go into that. But one of the interpretation that I just read, this was a 1987 um, seminar uh, in... Uh, it, at the Saitya Academy, Delhi, you know, um, not that I agree with it or anything. I'm just giving a, uh, just what they said. Uh, 87, 1987, uh, Saitya Academy, they had a seminar on Mahabharata and the proceedings of it that I was just reading last three days. And some different people claiming different things. So they said, hey, because they, uh, that time they did not have an exact indication of a Lanka. That's why the Ghatot coach was invited. Because there is some mystery possibly has set in uh, about Lanka by the time of Ramayana. So that is possibly their interpretation. I'm not saying I'm agreeing with it. But uh, the descriptions of Lanka that is there in the Ramayana are missing uh, in the Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. Like they quickly wind it up by saying, Gatotkach, you please go there. And the story quickly says, Gatotkacha went there, uh, talked to Vibhishan, got his uh, honorary approval and came back. You know, that and then this kind of end of a story. Um, other than that, if you have anything else, be because that's all we know, because just like a Sthala Purana, we know there was a flood and there is no uh, and anything additional information. And Hanuman speaking to Bhim. So when Hanuman sp speaking to Bhim. Hanuman ah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, no, that's correct. But but that's a different story. Meaning that is the issue of how I mean. So vibhishan, vibhishan of a Mahabharata is not cannot be the vibhishan of a Ramayana times. Mm. The descendants of a vibhishan is called vibhishan also. Vibhishan. Just like we have a Parshuram in Mahabharata, we have Parshuram in Ramayan, we have a Vasishta in Mahabharata, Vasishta in Ramayan, Vishwamitra in Mahabharata, Vishwamitra in Ramayan. And as you know, but many people may not know. There is a Valmiki, of course, at the Ramayana times, but there is a Valmiki in Mahabharata too. Like there is a, one Valmiki Rishi sitting next to Bhishmacharya when Bhishmacharya Yudhishthira Samvad is happening. You know? correct, correct. So, so that's a different issue. I don't want to go into that. But this is very interesting that something that Valmiki Ramayana does not say, but geological evidence shows which matches with the 12,209 BC. So that was the one part I found fascinating through my recent travels. So I think we cannot take just like Purana, we can take, cannot take every description and just blindly accept it is correct. We need to test it. That is true for anything, Itihas and whatnot. But when it comes to Sthala Puran, we need to be cautious because just because everything they say in Sthala Puran may not be same, uh, may not be correct. But we have to really give a justice to what is uh, preserved in Sthala Puran. There is a kernel of truth in it. And this was, I just thought, was a wonderful evidence. 
similarly the, the, uh, the point yeah. is uh, in the so the three people have abhay vardhan one is jambavan three people three people uh-huh. abhay vardhan hanuman yes yes jambavati jambavan jambavati jambavan, right? and the third yeah. is vibhishan yeah. and the bhagwan ram tells him as long as you want to live and enjoy you live and after that you come to my home saket to hanuman ji right Uh, to all three, to all three, he says. All three. Should, okay. Number one. Okay. Ah. Sugriv, Sugriv, he takes him with him. Sugriv ah. goes yeah. with him. Okay. Okay. No, this is a good one. So this is a good information. So this is a as a as a narration. This is very interesting that the three people, Bhagwan Ram says, "Hey, you can live as long as you like." As long are as actually have shown up in the Mahabharat. You know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Right, okay. and so as to uh, in what way, like the yoga or I mean whatever yeah, we can whatever say, just like is. just like Krishna, Bhagwan Krishna showed uh, Vishwarup Darshan through his yoga, Yogeshwara. Yes. yes. Similarly, this by ah, so this is a this is a good subject for research. Yes. So I'm sure pe- many people come and ask you what they can research on. Now that you have written a word at last, I mean I have to uh, look at it. But some of the Uh, tweets that you and your team does they are very fascinating i right. find them extremely fascinating uh, so let's Shri move Adhika on to does the it. Shri Adhika is listening she is the one who does it okay no no so my my congratulations congratulations to her and um, uh, my gratitude to her like she is doing a fascinating job you know very very uh, factual uh, but with a nice twist that you expect in the mahabharata like a grantham granthi tada chakre munir gudam kutuhalat so very fascinating So definitely, please convey my thanks to her. And if she is listening, that's great. Then let's move to the second one. This is in a way it's a Stella Puran. Nilesh, What I'm going to tell so you. So she has read my books even more than me because she tells sometimes cross questions me. You have yeah. written this and you spoke this. What yes. happened? Yeah, just just like uh, our case right now, the Gatot Kach. You know, Gatot Kach, which vision he made, and you know where was the Lanka then, and that, and it's important to remember. that no matter how much we st- how much we study and how much we try to bring the evidence together there always i mean that's the beauty of it but there will always be gaps left you know we will not get because we are trying to get as much information as we can and just like in archaeology we find very little similarly even in the narration lot of that happen is everything is not captured No. I mean that's just the nature of it. Only important things are captured, you know. Okay, but let's move to another set of stella Puran. Only we have to change the stella. We have to change the location of that Puran. You know, we are going to now travel west from India, and we are going to come to the end of Mediterranean. Okay, to Greece. Again, our subject is both Mahabharat and Ramayan. I just said I will say talk about Mahab Ramayan, but yes, you brought the good point of Mahabharat. You know, these three guys are there and. S- Uh, so they uh, getting permission from vibhishan so uh, if you consider the western europe uh, from the history point of view we know that until darwin practically bible was the history there was no other source i mean primary source i mean bible is not primary source but as a well known source now there were some for example if you go back say 2000 years Uh, which is again the kind of time of uh, new testament you can say uh, we have two books they both come from greece one is uh, has not survived it's called megasthenes indica okay megasthenes the book called indica it has not survived but later authors later to megasthenes refer to that book so when maybe they wrote it they had access to megasthenes book so i think uh, strabo Pliny and there are few others who refer to this uh, Megasthenes Indica. So we know that it existed. Uh, so that's one piece of evidence. The second piece of evidence is uh, Herodotus, and I don't know exactly what it was called in um, uh, Greece. Uh, sorry, Greek language, but a soft, loose translation of that in English is like history of the world. Okay. Now it's very important to remember that the uh, what. Uh, Herodotus is calling history of the world is for most part practically it is the history of Greece, Mediterranean area, Egypt. Uh, I mean those area around the Mediterranean, and because of the presence of Persian Empire, because Herodotus was about again four hundred B.C. or so, almost same time as Plato. I mean more or less plus minus two hundred three hundred years somewhere there. 
so he talks about the persian empire and all of that too so he has he's well um, acquainted with the eastern geography and that should also tell us very likely from the india to persia these records came to him now the record that i'm going to talk about from for herodotus that he found in egypt and the record i'm going to uh, talk about megasthenes he found those found those or he collected it from whoever he talked to uh, either through secondary sources or primary sources assuming he visited india now whether he is visited india we don't know so do understand these are secondary and uh, uh, primary and secondary sources let me uh, talk about megasthenes first and then i will share a screen again uh, to read some passages from uh, herodotus again all our viewers will find it fascinating but aditi ji you are going to find it extra fascinating and i'll tell you why when we get there so quickly megasthenes uh, those people who want to read uh, details they can go to my blog site like even you can just go to nileshok.com or uh, the wordpress nileshok uh, blog and if you type megasthenes or greek records or something you should able to find those two three blogs just a quick summary what megasthenes says he said that uh, indians and suppose we are based on megasthenes data we are talking uh, of megasthenes time more like a uh, say 200 bc 300 bc like time of alexander based on one account okay we don't know because india has no reference whatsoever in their preserved narratives to alexander none none all is based on the greek records we are talking and their connection and alexander story and connection with the india and so on and definitely there is a uh, the words are such that we can relate to pataliputra we can repeat to mathura mathura bora or some name written like this or i am getting some disturbance here i don't know if you can still hear me uh, aditya ji because it looks like uh, i can uh, my internet is slow Okay, I, good, good. My here is yeah, yeah. Thank you. Here it is showing my internet is slowing. Okay, all right. So uh, quickly, let me cover this. So Megasthenes uh, talks about uh, Indians having from their time. So let's for this discussion take it three hundred BC, something like that. It doesn't matter. A genealogy data going back to at least, or they say longer than about seven thousand years. Okay, so for simplicity, I'm going to stick at seven thousand years. So think of this as going back to seven thousand BC or so. And they say in this time, in that seven thousand years, there were one hundred and fifty-three generations. This is a very important point, Aditya ji, for many of the. Uh, indic pro indic researchers pro indic researchers doing research in india but if you ask me in my educated judgment doing it extremely carelessly and casually and just creating atrocious nonsense is this is a good example so if you take 7000 divided by 150 you know it will uh, uh, they will get an idea like a simple uh, a zoom uh, 10 years per generation that kind of nonsense doesn't work Uh, so here 153 generations and then or maybe some slightly different number but then what is interesting is then uh, megasthenes says that it began with this 7000 tracking it begins with like a dinosis you know and it may be pronounced in 10 different ways which can be considered with say either brahma some people have co compared that with the brahma other people had that dinosis compared with a daksha like a daksh as in daksha prajapati some people have um, identified that dinosis with uh, zeus and therefore indra okay so someone like that but that's that's sufficient for us because that doesn't affect us in any way and then the his record says that there were between the dinosis and heracles there were 13 generations okay 13 generations and about 1000 years have go gone by in those 13 generations so more or less like a generation of what 70 years or something like this and that heracles interestingly aditya ji is identified with bhagwan krishna now remember the information has come to megasthenes in, in a secondary tertiary in a you know very diluted form so there are some errors there 
but heracles that he refers to can be decently identified with krishna because he says that heracles was from a shaurasena dynasty and we know that the shaurasena he also talks about his place as a mathura bora like there is a word something similar to that and that tells us uh, that he is referring to mathura and then therefore krishna and there are some additional references that not i will not go into so now what is interesting is if you take that 1000 plus years that he assigns between dionysus and heracles for the 13 generations and if you just do the triangulation which is to say exactly that number 1000 plus years corresponds to 13 generations then how many years corresponds to uh, the remaining uh, genial remaining uh, what you call vamsha like 153 whatever the number was minus 13 corresponding to that you get a number and if you adjust that number lo and behold that number brings you very close to 5561 bce which is the time of mahabharat and therefore the time of krishna okay so this is a megasthenes evidence many people have known about it but even when the data is very very clear the identification to the best of our ability we can connect with krishna they have sidelined the issue because it goes against their extremely speculative claim and in this list sir aditya ji there are big names big names which are decorated with many awards and what not both outside india and inside india okay um so this actually matches the if you take megasthenes that 7000 years and 13 generation right. adjustment okay and i have written blogs on it now the last one uh, this is from herodotus and uh, i will give a background and then i will share uh, i will actually share the screen right directly from herodotus uh itself okay so let me see mm, let me sh- tell me if you can uh, see the screen you see the screen here yes. right yes. okay so let me see okay so let me discontinue that i am going to look for one more just give me a second i open another one yeah okay got it uh so uh let me share this and then uh, oh let me let me tell you the story first because if i share the screen people may start reading it okay now herodotus who is he's a greek guy his time is about 400 bc for simplicity we will consider 500 bc you know it doesn't change anything he was traveling that's how he collected information and he wrote the history of the world okay there he talks about the persian uh, empire but he talks of the ancient egyptians and so on very interesting huh? so now what he says he once went to egypt and for a lack of better word i'm going to say a local tourist guide you can say Th- that person he actually says was like a um, like a pharaoh like a priest priest you know like a rishi some somebody who was well informed what he did he took herodotus and you tell me if you have heard this huh, by the way before because megasthenes is well known but this is this was a new information that i found um, in the last while he takes it to one place along the bank of nile you can say and now we don't have those uh, so sure they may be there but we need to find out the location uh, this uh, tourist or a priest egyptian priest takes herodotus there and shows him on the bank of nile you can say 341 statues of kings 341 statues and then actually that priest goes on to explain to herodotus who is the first one then his son was this and his son was this and then this particular guy did this then this happened then his son was this and he goes through those 341 statues okay and he says hey none of this is a god by the way the statues that you are saying but before that there was a god this is very interesting okay but among these there is no god and remember those 341 statues comes to the time of herodotus which is 500 bc then this priest goes on to tell what is the total time for this 341 kings he says uh, for three kings approximately we have to, approximately we have to take 100 years 33 33 33 so he does a math based on that he does the math for 341 and that comes to 11340 uh, years now to 11340 i mean for simplification you can do 11300 doesn't matter add 2500 because herodotus time is 2500 years ago 
the simple number comes is 14,000 years ago. Okay. And now the fun. Okay. So this itself is a fun, by the way. But uh, let me see if I get this right. Okay. So when he starts telling, now this, uh, can you see the screen now? Yes. Uh, okay. And I can expand the screen. Okay. So this is uh, Herodotus. He has, I think, wrote like a nine books in his history of the world. I may not know the exact number. I think it's nine. And this is book number two. And in the book number two, it's chapter 124. And I said, this is what you're going to love. But there is more interesting stuff coming. He says down to the time, you know, so now he's talking, going to talk about these statues. Uh, but he says down to the time when Ram, Ram Sinitos, think of this as a Ram and Sita. Okay. Just like in Peru, when you are gone, I don't know if you heard from them. They have the festival Ram Sitwa. Ram now Sitwa. they call it Inti Rayami. Nowadays Rayami. they call it Inti Rayami, like the solar Ram, you know, Surya Mamashi Ram. Inti means sun. Surya Mamashi Ram in Peru. And before they call it Ram Sitwa. So if you take that T out, it's a, sorry, V out, it's almost like Ram Sita. Correct. In Peru. So here also, you see, uh, I can put my cursor here. I don't know if you can see the cursor, but here. Just at the first line of 124, down to the time when Ram, Ram Sinitos was king, see, they told me where, where was in Egypt nothing but orderly rule. Now they're saying, or as if Ram Sita was there. Now, you know what it more very likely, just like Vibhishan, we are talking in the Mahabharat times. It is uh, immediately Rama's descendants, they are also almost going by that name with the great memory of Ram and Sita. But what is interesting is, he says, during that time, Nothing but orderly rule, like Ram Rajya, so to say, and Egypt prospered greatly. Just like people of Dang, they might have come from somewhere, from the southern India, from Shabri descendants, but they moved to different place. These are, if you know, like all the kings are called Ramesses. You remember that? The kings are called Ramesses. Then if you look at just north of Egypt, the Mittanis and Hittite, they're the names of the kings are very matching with the Indian names, but even more specifically the names of Ikshwaku dynasty, like Dasharatha becomes Tasharatha and so on and so forth. So these are descendants. And then, you know, then the list goes, but after that, another Cheops came, but he brought down every kind of evil. So things actually deteriorated. That's what it goes through. So this is chapter 124. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, the same book, but I'm going to jump and bring you to chapter 141. This is just to quickly summarize what I told you before. Okay. So uh, that priest king is explaining to Herodotus all those 341 kings. So if I can do this chapter 142. So he says this number of chief priests. This is very interesting. So here it says who there had been after see who reigned last meaning at the time when the discussion is happening in Egypt, uh, the priest says this Hephaestos, whoever that was, was the last king. And then he says there had been 341 generations of men and that in them there had been the same number of chief priest and the king. Just like uh, to the royal king, there is always a priest attached like a Vasishta and so on. Okay, there. But the 300 generations of men are equal to 10,000. I'll go fast through this. Essentially adds that to 11,340. If we add 2,500 of our times, we get 14,000 years ago. We started with uh, Rama, Ram Sinitos and so on. Uh, so that subject is over. Now I'm going to give you something very interesting in 145 and then we can stop. You will love this. I'm going to ask you this question instead of giving the answer. <laughs> then he says, among the Hellenists, Hellenists meaning the Greeks, Heracles and that Dionysius that we just talked about, and one more person, Pan, you know. Now, these are translation many times and a lot of things may be lost there, are accounted the latest born of the gods, but with the Egyptians, so he's saying, the Greeks kind of give a different status to uh, Heracles and Dionysius and Pan, but Egyptian kind of interpret in a slightly different fashion. Now, this is not unusual. Like if you know, uh, in a Gaudiya tradition also, when it comes to, not Gaudiya tradition, I would say all Vaishnava tradition, if you look at Prabhupada's purport, to say Balarama, like, you know, Prabhupada writes beautifully, he says, um, 
लाईक रामानुजाचार्य कन्सिडर बलरामा कृष्ण ब्रदर एज अ सर्टन टाईप ऑफ अवतार बट देन ही सेज बट सनातन गोस्वामी और रूप गोस्वामी कन्सिडर्स हिम ऑफ अ डिफरंट काइंड बट देन जीव गोस्वामी इवन डिफर्स फ्रॉम सनातन गोस्वामी अँड सेज जीव गोस्वामी कन्सिडर्स हिम एज अ पूर्ण अवतार व्हेरी क्लोज टू लाईक अ कृष्णा समथिंग लाईक दिस सो इट इज एव्हरी वन्स अंडरस्टँडिंग ऑफ इट सो सिमिलर थिंग the way they understood heracles dionysus and pan in greece is not exactly the same way they are understanding in egypt so keep that in mind otherwise the reason uh, i'm mentioning this aditya ji is that in our when the program goes and people listen to it they will start fighting but hey uh, the way i understood pan the way i understood krishna the way i understood brahma or indra or whoever bishma is very different well yes it is different your understanding i mean whoever understands that is different than greek just like the greeks understanding was different than egyptian but let's move on this is you're going to find very fascinating now the pan see pan you know what i am identifying with i will ask you to identify rather than me saying it okay let's see how much we, you and me are on the same page <laughs> don't be stressed aditya ji you are never stressed <laughs> <laughs> so pan is a very ancient god and see just the beautiful thing and then he says and he is remember he is very ancient god eh? meaning not the pan as an individual but he comes from that and he is one of those which are called the eight gods who do you think eight who <laughs> krishna vasudev and devakis na 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 eight vasus vasus eight vasus yes eight vasus Haan. so therefore the pan in my speculation i was thinking maybe they are referring to someone like a bishma for example yeah. you know it may not be bishma but eight vasus ashta vasus huh? you are going to find the next thing fascinating remember what i told you megasthenes identifies heracles with krishna okay and now just look at this while heracles is of the second rank meaning vasus are like a nature forces like right. agni vasus now we are talking personification like person somebody taking a form you know like that and heracles is of the second rank it says again in a egyptian uh, way of understanding but very interesting who are called the 12 gods dwadash aditya ha ah, aditya nam aham vishnu huh? Yes. 12 gods very beautiful and then the dionysus now which is as i said identified in a many ways with a brahma with a daksha or with a zeus and therefore with a indra okay is the of a third rank you know like a dev but it is and namely of those like a creator because now this is also you're going to love it the dionysus if you consider brahma and of course indra is also fine but brahma or daksha or prajapati look what it says the third rank namely of those who were born of the 12 gods who is born from vishnu yes now in in our uh, understanding bhagavad bhagavad puran everywhere what is it he is coming from the nabi of a vishnu so a understanding that is possibly distorted because of distance because of ordinary people telling these accounts of the gods even then the kernel of truth of the ashtavasus or uh, 12 adityas um, or the different ranks or the dionysus the brahma being born out of vishnu is actually preserved even in the herodotus book okay so that's it that's all i wanted to say for today <laughs> so i will stop sharing and uh, you can add your thoughts ask questions and we can we can stop it's mind blowing evidence and also the the you know interpretation also depends on the perspective from which you are looking at it we cannot just Very interpret uh, just like that and you need to have some basis you know if you yeah Very you see, if you see from the perspective of bhagavat puran then you exactly see what the way you are describing and uh, if you see from other shastra then you see something else with the way you are describing correct 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 because indra is not exactly identified with the brahma you correct. see but now because it's a dionysus and we say there if you look from a greek purely greek point of view hellenistic point of view then he is identified with the zeus and not always not always that is also interesting you know uh, so th- there also they have a variation just like we see variations in our just like a nakshatra devata you know nakshatra devata varies from one indian text to another indian text like that but that's all, that's all, that's what i had and i thought it was uh, fascinating and i thought i'll share with you and our audience it's a very amazing 
actually one question i have nirji like if somebody is uh, i have not read the megasthenes any work so far and i may do that in future but so far i have not done it anything there which is, one which one you're saying you are not read megasthenes books ah. Megasthenes book doesn't exist, but we just uh, get the passages through Pliny and Strabo, and yeah. there is one Magrindel or some guy in uh, you know who has translated whatever uh, as a Indica, like uh, some some composition of it. Yeah, it's in English. You can read that. But I was in Cairo uh, one huh. month ago. It's hmm. a very unsafe place to go, especially hmm. at the end. Then mm. even if you have an American passport, still difficult to go. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I heard from there is that uh, the uh, in the and I was not in the tourist spots. I was going to the River Nile. Up, and up, I, up, upper River Nile, right? Yeah. Down towards uh, Tanzania. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, which depending on how upstream. you look at it, you're going up. <laughs> it's upstream. Right. Because it is going from right. south to north. Yes, yes. So I went upstream yeah. towards uh, Sudan and towards yeah. Somalia. Yeah. So there are a group of pyram pyramids over there again. Yeah. Yeah. So and those pyramids are known as the pyramids of the original pharaoh. Hmm. So one at the mouth, uh, Egypt, Cairo is almost at the mouth. Giza is almost at the mouth. But if you go upstream, yeah. and there also the story doesn't change. Story is still the Ramses. Huh. So those are the, uh, but they are known as the image of the main Ramses. Of course. So it's like a Thailand, right? Rama Thailand. 1, Rama 2, Rama 3, Rama 10, you know? Yeah. Very interesting. But when you reach the, so the uh, upstream, you can keep on going and you reach the, uh, the Kilimanjaro. Huh. So Kilimanjaro, there is, a, there is a mountain called Meru next to Kilimanjaro. Yeah. And people sometimes wrongly say that is a Meru, but it is just a name put by some British guy. Huh, huh. Original name nobody knows. But at Kilimanjaro is a very high volcano. And mm. there the story is that this is the place where a golden boy came, tried mm. to put his foot on that. Mm. Hmm. The golden boy is Vaman, like we can refer to. That's what I was going to say when you said the boy, you know. Start with the yeah. uh, blonde hair. So the yeah. so so that is the story over there. So there is somewhere or the other deep connection of Africa with Sanatan Dharma. Right. One more thing I I should add because now you said this. Uh, do you know this? And I I forgot where book, but you can easily find this reference if you go and search. And you may have it already. Um, finding the origin of Nile. Okay. By the way, the Nile is like a sort of Americanized Nile. Actually, it's a Nile. You know, Nile the river. Nile. Yeah. You will hear that also in Africa. Now they call it Neil. Might have call Neil. Neil. Now it might sometimes change because we say the things in American way and stuff, stuff yeah. like that. So when they when this was, I think, um, not British guy, but some European guy, like maybe Denmark, you know, from Denmark or something like this. Uh, I forgot the details. He want he wanted to go on a mission to find the origin of Nile. Okay. So that was, of course, in Africa. And of course, then you have to decide this bit, like when they split, like uh, uh, tributaries, then which one you follow. Yeah, Victoria. So in Lake order to, ha, Victoria Lake, right? So that is the name they have given, you know, they to the know. lake. To just glorify everyone. Any, just like Victoria Terminus here, you know, what Victoria has to do with that. But hey, they are ruling and they are exploiting. So yes. But what is interesting is this guy from Europe, and he did a tremendous job. I mean, a very brave job because the, the, the uh, traveling was not easy. But that book mentions that, do you know, so you're saying that Sanatan connection to Africa, and I want to mention that, that, and, and you can easily find it if you search in Google, that that fellow, he came to India or he took, actually he had worked in India in the military for some time. Uh, at some of the post, whether a Dutch post or a British post or whatever. And he took the maps of the native maps from India for Africa. And this was known and he used those maps and those maps were useful to him to find the origin of a Nile River. And you know how what how it was described? That area was described as a Soma Parvat, just like the Meru Parvat you are saying. It was done as a Soma Parvat, huh? meaning Parvat in Africa was described in Indian maps as a Soma Parvat. This is very interesting. And the Nila River was also mentioned. 
in those maps and this is the story of last 300 years within last 300 years meaning when that guy uh, european guy found the origin of uh, uh, the nile river and then he called it victoria lake victoria fall you know everything victoria so this is also interesting so he see the I mean, indians had a maps of africa that to the and that accurate enough that he could find them useful so i just wanted to add that the Kilimanjaro, the view of the moon, moon is one of the best over there. In the you world. climbed, you climbed Kilimanjaro to some extent, not too fully, because uh, the, the too many missionaries were there, and, okay. And I had to stay with the missionary to go there, right. and uh, there was a ban by the Tanzania government to climb from their side because of mm -hmm. too much of ecological destruction. Ah, but we, yeah, yeah, but you can easily bribe through it. I didn't want to do it, yeah. There. There's yeah, a lot of risk okay. there, but, but the moon was, I've seen the biggest ever. Uh -huh. And the uh -huh. next time when I'm going to go, I'll go, I'll go through a helicopter. Okay. Okay. It's not climbing. Yes. And uh, it is not that tall, but there is a uh, ice on the top or something at Kilimanjaro, correct? It is, it is tall. It is 6,000 meters. 6,000 meters. Okay. okay. So it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It, is. It, is. it is tall. Yeah. yeah. It is tall. Okay. Tall. I didn't realize that. Okay. It's tall and it is the own, it is a uh, Purana is so accurate that they mention only one peak in Africa. Interesting. And uh, do you remember, do you, do you recall which Purana? That's inter Lingapura. very interesting. Lingapura. Uh, Lingapura. Okay, okay. Lingapura. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Have you covered that Devi Puran, Lingapura in your uh, world atlas? Yes. Those for two. Oh, okay, okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. So they are doing a great job. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Two percent of you, you do ninety-eight percent. So the in the <laughs> okay. So so the in the uh, in the Pushkar Dweep, it is said there is a mountain chain, uh, peak, which divides the entire continent in two halves. Okay, and and that mountain peak runs through the west of the entire. Mount Udagiri. It says that. Uh, so our, our Rockies, Rockies, you are thinking, huh? Yes, our, uh, no, our uh, Pushkar. Andes and South Rockies? America. Andes, South uh, America. But even the Rockies does on the west side too, if you think of it, you know? Yeah. And and the, no, but the here, the peak is only one. Rockies doesn't uh, have one peak. Rockies have many peaks. Yeah. Here, the peak is only one. So there are many such references, many, many such references. Okay. And the prarthana is more important. Bhagavad Purana says each dweep in prarthana, what prayers are happening in which each dweep. So, hmm. so the 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 worshipped in plux they say agni, fire is worshipped, uh. and that yeah, is the yeah, main yeah. main so, deity of entire Africa. Main deity of entire Africa is fire, fire, agni. Ah. Uh. Okay, That's okay, main, okay. Main deity, like uh, if you go to any tribe in Tanzania or North uh, Africa, even the converted ones, people who uh, become uh, Muslims or Christians. Uh, the one yeah. thing about Africans is they have not left the religion, even though they convert. The name uh, may be Joseph or everybody's name is Christian nowadays. Right, and right. Uh, but the culture and the religion is still the local. It has not. Changed. Well, I hope so. I mean, that's good to hear. But unfortunately, I mean. You know, India also what happens is when the conversion happens, that first generation they may stick, but the very severe brainwashing happens in India, at least in the second generation, second and generation. very quickly, very quickly the things change. But that's a different subject. Yes. But that's a beautiful thing. So we talked about, um, you know, Greece, we talked about India's uh, Stalapuran and actually Africa's Stalapuran, you know, right? Very good. We can stop on this note. Yes. Thank you all very much for joining. And, uh, I can see many of your questions, but they are not relevant to today's topic. So I will not take them. And also people who are watching from the East Coast. Uh, one question has come. Is that, okay. is, is Ramayan, how is Ramayan relevant for today's age? The answer can be very big and you can watch Nile Shok's videos all over the world. Go to In Google fact, and search uh, uh, in fact, I will give a quick answer, not give the answer itself, just very similar to yours. Just very recently, 
Yash Yashadip was also on your platform too, right? Yashadip yes, Devdar. Yes, you know, yeah. yeah. Yes. So Yashadip Devdar, those people who have watched on uh, Aditya Ji's Saptology platform, Yashadip Devdar, he recently came on the uh, Ranveer show. And it, that exact same question as to how Ramayana is relevant to today's time. In fact, when Ranveer asked him, why did you choose Ramayana? I mean, he's a uh, Mumbai IIT engineer, IIM, a, a serial entrepreneurial, very successful. What made him stop working on his entrepreneurial things and dedicate his life full time practically to Ramayana? What is so special about it? And he has given uh, maybe a very short answer, but very relevant answer. Uh, as to in what sense Ramayana is very relevant to today's situation. So that I would encourage people to watch your talk with uh, Yashadip and maybe the Ranveer's uh, recent conversation with Yashadip. 21 notes. Yeah. It's such 21 notes on Satology. So thank you all very much. And Yashji, thank you so much for coming. My, it's like my life came back. So thank you. Namaste. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. <laughs>